जादू मंत्र जादू मंत्र जादू मंत्र यू आर गोइंग इन टू द फ्यूचर यू टॉक टू मी A always be B C closing. Yeah. Ever want to get any more better than that? The queen is dead. This episode of Queen is Dead is brought to you by Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Google Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor.fm to get started. Greta Gerwig and all were inspired by her. Okay, okay. So she wrote this book called Play As It Lays. Uh, I mean, you can compare it to like Sunset Boulevard, okay. all of that. So it's basically like this um, somewhat a- aging actress, and uh, it's like this this uh, later phase of an actress, like say she's uh, fading into oblivion type of thing. And then it's just that on one side, like her professional and, and personal life, and mm. personal life is like her, you know, marriage collapsing, mm. all of that. So that is one book, and then the second one was this thing called uh, Late Fame. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so this is by this guy called Arthur uh, Schnitz Schnitzler, I think. Okay. So how I came across this is, um, so there's a guy called Stefan Zweig. So this is someone who I know because of Wes Anderson. So you've seen uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like in at the beginning of Grand Budapest Hotel like it's written this is based on the works of Stefan Zweig. Okay. So like even Wes Anderson he was like uh, he was just trying to write something in his style. Okay. And uh, I think maybe like 5 years back or something I just um, like I just I just looked up this guy because uh, he said this this was in like I found uh, Grand Budapest Hotel interesting and then I just wanted to know. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I just like randomly started looking this guy up and then the thing is th- This guy is a uh, th- some Austrian author mm-hmm. and he's he's written a lot of these interesting things like if you if you know the tone of uh, Grand Budapest Hotel yeah, yeah yeah like you know there's a specific tone right like yeah, even yeah. with the humor and yeah uh, the whole whimsy idea thing ha huh. yeah like very whimsical like you know mm. uh, like very nostalgia exactly. type of yeah, thing yeah, nostalgia. so this guy all his books like all short stories everything is like that okay Okay. Uh, in fact i i just uh, saw one thing called uh, there's a short story he wrote called game of chess a game of chess okay so i was like uh, what is this and then I, th- that was like one of the first books i bought okay this is uh, it's a book was called a game of chess and other stories by stefan zweig mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay so how that is is like uh, it's almost uh, it's very similar to old boy it's like uh, i i think maybe park chan wook might have read it before he It was related uh, to old boy. old boy. It was like similar to old boy. No, no, no. There's just one sequence in it which is similar to old boy. Like in old boy, do you remember? Like you know that famous uh, one one uh, take uh, one shot fight scene. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This extended uh-huh, fight scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing. Huh? It's like this twelve minutes thing where he beats up everyone when he's out of prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the concept behind that was like, um, so this guy was in prison. Like I think he wrongly went to prison or something. I don't remember old boy. Okay. And then. Uh, while he is in prison he's like imagining fighting uh, people outside okay like he 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 doesn't know how to fight when he goes in and then his once he's out he's going on this path of revenge thing right in in that movie like he's going to uh, avenge like uh, you know whoever killed i, I don't remember old boy mm-hmm. and so uh, the idea was like he he's in jail and he's just visualizing fighting all these people yeah and then he goes out and then he's like a, this pro fighter <laughs> He thinks yeah, he's a pro so, fighter, or he or he becomes one. He what? Does he think he's a pro fighter, or he becomes one? He becomes one. Like, see, you remember that fight scene, right? It's just this one shot, and yeah, then there's yeah. this wall, and in front he's like fighting everyone, yeah, like yeah, left yeah. and right. Mm-hmm. 
yeah so like that was the concept in the movie even this this uh, short story is something like that okay it's like uh, there's this guy who uh, goes to a uh, prison mm-hmm. and then while in prison like he starts uh, thinking about chess and this is like one of the uh, most famous stories about chess it's called a game of chess mm-hmm. and uh, so he starts thinking about it and then he starts like obsessively doing it in while in jail mm-hmm. okay and then he comes out and then he goes on to cruise and the story is basically like there's this guy who meets this person who came out of jail on a cruise and mm-hmm. then they they start playing chess in in the cruise ship mm-hmm. so basically this the same thing as old boy it's like a guy who went to jail oh, and then yeah, he start okay, visualizing i remember, I remember. Ha, ha. get it mm-hmm. yeah and he's he's like visualizing playing chess and then uh, when he comes out he's like a great chess player okay okay is that type of thing so I, like i found this interesting and then i was just looking up like uh are there other people like this author stefan zweig mm-hmm. and then i found this guy his name is arthur schnitzler mm-hmm. and then i found one book of his it's called late fame okay and it's just about like 90 100 pages it's like a novella based okay okay yeah and so that book it's it, it was like uh, the whole thing is just a guy who's maybe 70 or something mm-hmm. and suddenly he becomes famous okay it's like uh, you heard of people who have got famous at like 40 and all right like yeah. actors or others. yeah i mean this thing he's like 70 and then he's a writer and he had written all this stuff maybe like 30 years back okay 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 and then what happens is when he's around 70 to 80 like the elderly face of his life like these people maybe like 7 to 8 people uh, who are somewhat snobs like they are these literature snobs someone like these like so into uh, art and all that mm. like they dis- one of them discusses his work okay and uh, they come they come in touch with him and he say are you this famous author and all and he's just basically living just a f- completely mundane life now he's a nobody <laughs> like he hasn't received fame when he was in his uh, you know prime years uh, okay yeah it's it's a book like that and then uh, what happens is uh they invite him they invite him and then they start asking him questions they ask him to read something that he has written okay uh, like some poetry or something and then he reads it and then like everyone applauds like everyone goes crazy and uh, th- they ask him like how what did you mean when you wrote this 30 years back and then he doesn't even remember okay like he just switched his career and then he started doing some mundane job and then now he's like a nobody like he he literally like, like just makes up some answer and just to tell them and now he's like like it's a it's a huge shock to his world he's like uh, 70 and now he's suddenly famous he's like the the acclaim i should have gotten mm-hmm. like 30 40 years back i'm getting <clears throat> now mm-hmm. and so he starts like that's not going into his head like he starts becoming like uh, like if someone doesn't recognize him now he's like oh, how has this guy not uh, uh, how does this guy not recognize me i am a famous guy oh, although okay. it's just like this group of 7 to 8 people who know him <laughs> It's like imagine some like film star or like film director you know now <laughs> who like why, when he was uh, in his prime like nobody even looked at their work actually yeah mm. like like some uh, kamal swaroop or something yeah or even sham benegal i think sham benegal people still looked up to him but um, yeah but i don't think so nobody's ever spoken about him in pop culture yeah, uh, yeah. or the existence of his films or the importance of his films in the last decade or the last 15 years that is what i'm sure about mm-hmm. and like now suddenly it's like more cool to talk about uh, all these uh, <laughs> older greats and all and now he's yeah. like brought back into fame yeah but so I, i mean this book is somewhat like that yeah but but i do i still don't think so people still talk about the greats like you hardly hear about any of the great 70s mm-hmm. 80s filmmakers anymore i know but at least in like film circles the name is more sure. prevalent yeah, right? yeah, yeah. like uh, forget sham benegal think of like kamal swaroop kamal swaroop yeah is like nobody talked about that except for like a room full of people yeah yeah at max and suddenly it became like cool to watch this film like oh is, like i heard someone say this is my favorite filmmaker or like the probably seen just he's seen right just one film of his at max yeah yeah it's like bro i've seen pulp fiction i am a tarantino file <laughs> now i'll get a t-shirt which says written, written and directed, and directed by, by quentin, quentin tarantino, tarantino. <laughs> but yeah i mean that's the um, i think that's more like a norm these days like people start doing such things just to be a part of the pop culture and it is it is also on us how to bring all the right kind of filmmakers into limelight as well and um, yeah. because i think they 
they deserve the credit that because they've made some great cinema like i think um, apart from like a few bunch of people people wouldn't recognize or appreciate work of sai paranj pai either like sai yeah, paranj yeah. pai made chashma badur and david mm-hmm. dhawan made a remake of that film which is i think that is the film that they'll remember but not the older one by any chance mm-hmm. i mean you cannot even compare the newer one with the older one like it's a different breed it's a different class altogether because yeah. when i watched that but that's not the main type of uh, sai paranj pai movie right like she made other like middle class kind of stuff true right? true true but i think that was also something which was like a part of her over like um mm-hmm. i think katha katha in my opinion was the best thing that she did and sparsh yeah sorry sparsh yeah sparsh as well sparsh, yeah sparsh. but i still think katha is my favorite because just the simplicity of storytelling right mm-hmm. it's it, she's just taken a basic tale of uh, the tortoise and and the rabbit and uh, mm. she's placed like characters like that and the film is literally about those two characters and she sticks to that mm. it's fairly simple but it's supremely enjoyable the way it's directed so i remember i just point out one scene um mm. um so farooq sheik comes and starts living in that chawl with uh, nasiruddin shah okay which is this chashme badur no no i'm talking about katha okay okay and um, what happens is farooq sheik becomes like the talk of the place like he's suddenly mm-hmm. going to people's houses because he's he's a jobless person and mm-hmm. um so nasiruddin shah walks back to his chawl uh, like to his house in the evening and we see farooq sheik standing amongst the um, all the major people living in that chawl like the major characters and all and he starts um telling them a joke and something that appears on screen is the word censored <laughs> mm-hmm. like i was like who would have thought of from at least indian perspective or probably even leave that just the hindi film perspective nobody f- would have thought of a joke like that like it just shows censored and he's talking behind and they're all laughing and you don't hear the joke so it says censored on the screen yeah it just says censored but you can see he's telling them joke and they're all laughing that's it oh like the word censor censored appears on on screen in a very in a diagonal format and they laugh mm-hmm. i mean these are like small small things that i'm talking about but there are obviously major things that all of them have done like even shyam benigal or govin nilani although they were like fairly dramatic but the kind of stuff mm-hmm. that they've done like even if you if you take uh, shyam benigal's kalyog which is an adaptation of mahabharat mm-hmm. the way he's directed that thing that film and uh, every small small detail like um small dynamics between characters i don't think so anyone has ever replicated that kind in hindi cinema after that probably like somewhere somewhat close would be um dil dhadakne do like a family dynamic and each character like two characters will have a different set of dynamic and it will hmm. be very subtle like you know okay this character yeah. this character has a certain relationship this character and this character have a certain relationship but it's not done through dialogue or something it's a very even if it's done through dialogue it's very minimal I mean mm-hmm. I mean Shyam Benigal and and filmmakers like these should be spoken more in pop culture just so that I mean they deserve every bit of fame I think the right kind of filmmakers or the right kind of cinemas do appreciate uh filmmakers from the past uh, but that's a very few number but it's it's only now that we you know given proper appreciation I think like before yeah. it was like you know this is like the art house uh, section yeah 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 marginalized section there was also this one more thing ke most of these films are not available everywhere hmm. like i prob sham benigal has made some 20 or more films i, do, I, I don't have a count but he's made sh- suraj ke uh, suraj what? ka satwa ghoda i mean that is available yeah. but there are f- few films that are not available anywhere like i've i've s- mm-hmm. s- checked like i've gone through the whole internet to find those films i've probably found some torrent prints but i cannot download them because there are no cds or something I mean that is a very mm. different problem but um there are some films that you cannot find anywhere so i feel mm-hmm. like obsessively looking for for his films and all like just to have like his collection and like watch them and mm-hmm. also another another problem that we have is all all these companies that are uh, restoring all these prints the biggest issue is they've literally cut it down uh, the run time of the film like a 2 mm-hmm. hour 40 minute film is now a 2 hour film now like how do you even justify right. that i have no idea like i was watching uh, govin nilani's thakshak and uh, uh, the the print on uh, amazon prime was 2 hours 1 minute and the original run time is 2 hours 46 minute so i mean mm. how do you even like water it down to that thing and like how do you even like enjoy the whole thing what's the name of the movie thakshak t h a k k t h a k s h a k talking about a k so oh great segue great segue, <laughs> great segue. 
bro i think we lost like 100 people now talking about this it's okay it's okay but like um, like what is what is your take or like um, how do you think um, they used fame as a satirical aspect in the film yeah so that that's what i'm saying so in, in that book i was talking about it's like Uh, like I, I'm, I can spoil it, right? No one's gonna read yeah, this. Yeah, I didn't even know. It's, it's very obscure. Okay. Okay. So in the end, it's like, um, uh, so basically, this guy, he, they ask him, can you write something new? Okay. Mm-hmm. So he, this guy, in forty years, he hasn't written a single thing. So obviously, he's like rusty. He's like completely out of touch. Mm-hmm. He can't write anything new. Mm-hmm. And he keeps saying, okay, okay, in like one week, I'll write something and I'll give it to you, like a new poem, mm-hmm. or like uh, some book or something. Mm-hmm. and then that becomes two weeks then it becomes a one month and then everyone's like uh, is this guy okay like uh, and then he stop stop showing up for the meetings where he's being praised mm mm-hmm. and then finally he's like okay i can't take this pressure i just go admit it like i can't write anything new <laughs> okay okay and then uh, <clears throat> and then he goes there and ad- admits it and then everyone is like uh, it's fine i mean it's understandable like see this is a guy who didn't uh, get the fame when he needed it probably yeah ha ha and then uh, that's that happens at a meeting and he, everyone's like okay it's fine it's fine you didn't need to lie to us it was fine and then he just goes around and talks to people and then one by one he realizes uh, out of a group of 10 only one guy has actually read his work oh yeah so it's like a bunch of people just praising out of nothing and then he goes to the one guy and uh-huh. then he's like uh, actually i just read the first five pages and then so i don't really know how it ends uh-huh. of your book or whatever So actually, I was thinking of something like that, and then uh, even something like Birdman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that's <clears throat> dealing with fame, right? Exactly. Yeah, right. It's more like this uh, washed-out guy who's now a theater actor, mm. and then he wants to direct this thing that will, you know, maybe give a uh, new make it uh, revolutionary. <clears throat> yeah, like a renaissance mm-hmm, he's expecting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then nothing comes out of it. Yeah, but I think that's that's the really that's a really great aspect in terms of all these narratives. like they push you as a viewer also to think okay yeah now he's also going to push himself to achieve something mm. but eventually there's no point to it and i think mm-hmm. that that aspect yeah. of it really fits very well in that ak versus ak narrative like you think there's something mm. big that is going to happen and eventually it's a very middling ground that where it ends mm-hmm. like like it like from a very neutral viewer's perspective i know i'm going to have a certain set of expectations and the way it was building to that finale i thought something explosive or something really crazy might ha- might happen but eventually it was something very normal that you see but it also really fits the context as well with the film mm-hmm. and also um, like fits the point that we were talking about that you think that that fame is really going to lead it lead you to some point but it's actually nothing there's mm-hmm. no point to it yeah So if you haven't seen AK vs AK, please go watch it and then come back and listen to this. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, like, what about? Uh, I, I don't think they went too deep into that idea. Like, oh, yeah, uh, this is a actor who's like nobody is so like washed out now. Yeah, yeah. But I think any of that. Uh, just the whole uh, real time aspect of the film, the film inside film mm. aspect, just the whole real time thing um, mm. adds to the whole experience. You don't need to really delve deep. you just pick things mm. small small things maybe throughout the narrative and just enjoy what is happening to that character in that moment that can be paranoia that can be fear that can be happiness that can be some some uh, adrenaline rush but mm. you just experience what is happening to that character in at that moment so obviously you cannot have a very you do have a moment where he sits down and like he delivers a monologue uh, under uh, anil kapoor delivers yeah, a yeah. monologue which is the mm. uh, in a in a different film that would have been him contemplating all of that in in probably like alone and here it's a more hmm. uh, more theatrical version of all of it because he's playing a heightened heightened uh, uh, anil kapoor personality of himself but uh, hmm. yeah even this has that kind of moment but you really don't get to see the fame fame aspect of it because it's already established okay yeah he's a big star and you get on with that so oh, and then uh, like we we talked about it's like heightened a lot right hmm, hmm, hmm. like if you said that, like how in the first scene mm-hmm. it's like it gets into a comical fight exactly, so yeah. why do you think they did that like why do you think they made it that level like they could have made it yeah. like say you know how they behave in interviews and all if you see them yeah 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 and then keeping that grounded thing mm-hmm. you could have added something new instead they went to like okay like 
Anurag Kashyap is like an evil guy who is like you know kidnapping someone and Yeah, all. I mean they they went for that kind of side as well so that it becomes hmm. easier to express those kind of emotions as well. I mean I'm just talking a b- very basic thing but but you know it becomes easier to communicate to the viewer as well if you go that deep. But hmm. leaving that it's just that it's not a meta film in my opinion. Okay, neither I feel it's a hmm. mockumentary because if if it was that then they wouldn't do those things because you know ki those people are not that kind of people as well. Like you know they are yeah. acting like someone that that really takes away the fact that they are that, that it's a mockumentary in a way. or a meta film mm-hmm. in my opinion like this was more yeah. like a thriller and you enjoy that part mm. and they didn't like uh, like you know what if it was just the concept it was not uh, these real life people mm-hmm. like what if it was just a like just an actor who is angry at a director like how would that have worked because i think uh-huh. like at some point they lose this thing that this is the this is anurag kashyap this is anil kapoor true true and then it becomes like just the story aspect of it goes on yeah, yeah, yeah because like the whole meta thing happens in the first 30 minutes yeah that's right? it that's that's mostly it because if you see like actual meta movies and all like what are so called meta movies like some uh, something like john malkovich Jan- adaptation, like adaptation. Or, yeah <clears throat> so like the meta thing continues like Tell adaptation you. they go to the extent like the third exactly. act of it is a whole joke based yeah, on yeah. the first like what is meta true like it's like that level so like somewhere there's an expectation that this is going to like snowball into something newer and newer exactly, and newer exactly exactly yeah instead it became like halfway this is one thing next half is another thing exactly and i mean, i think we should appreciate the fact that it's a different breed it's not it's not trying to ape something else yeah i mean uh, they could have easily aped uh, any any meta film in a way to be very honest but i think there's mm. the idea of treating their treatment uh, of it as a thriller just gave it a different dimension like you 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 don't expect what is going to happen and mm-hmm. you don't even expect the kind of ending that it has even though it's like supremely average you you don't know if if it's going to come and i think that's a very great part mm. in my opinion like, like even i found it like like very uh, comical like it's intentionally comical mm-hmm. but then i found it like what do you say it's just like it's just wrapping this thing up now yeah yeah, yeah. uh in a way yeah like i didn't find that part like delivered that much and all but then still um also it wasn't like uh, yeah, yeah yeah i i mean leaving all of this part i'll just talk about something else as well like this is a film about fame and all of that like what we've been speaking for a while now but but is it like they they exactly. sort of divert from that exactly. pretty they, they divert right? from that whole fame fact because i think fame also um, um adds a lot of wonder for the characters like there's a lot of amazement hmm. that is there i mean here it's more like just people meeting and just them trying to um, get selfies at max there's no mm-hmm. cinematic wonder to it so that that idea what i was what i'm trying to say is just the whole real aspect of it as well like like you're just documenting someone um sort of yeah. sort of documenting someone also has something dif- as a different dimension to it like mm. like you you don't see the charm and the wonder of fame actually you just seeing the grunge part of it like him going yeah, to I mean, slums and dancing. I mean, it's not even about fame. Right? It's just like when you see from Anil Kapoor side, it's just maybe it's talking. It's like brushing on that thing. Mm-hmm. But then it's mostly just like on one hand, it's just this behind the scenes thing about you know what happens in a film industry. Exactly, exactly. All of that and a lot of some some cheeky jokes that like you know someone going on 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 a scooty nearby. Anurag Kashyap mm-hmm. says, "Oh look, that's Anurag Basu." I mean, that's a very cheeky yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah. Like, you probably would have heard it somewhere as well. Like that's probably an inside joke amongst them. but it's funny because at that moment mm. when it when it when it happens to someone you find it funny so mm-hmm. i mean that that's a very good thing like i i, I mean um, there are just small small things that like i appreciated in that film and there's a lot of critical air around it like people not liking it and all of that so i'm yeah i mean i think it's because uh, at some point it just becomes like one guy chasing another guy type of movie <laughs> but you know it it can combine with the rest of it like the exactly themes it was dealing with but i, I don't know like it just like it becomes distinct at one point that mainly what happened hmm. and uh, but what other movies can you think of that deal oh, with, like, i just something just came to my inside mind was celebrity life or something yeah something just came to my mind was last year we watched uh, once upon a time in hollywood together right Yeah, yeah, yeah and um, i'll just tell what the people's perspective was towards what i'm going to talk as well is like mm. they most of the, most of the people who were 
quote unquote Tarantino fans or just fans who wanted to watch a Tarantino film in theater were fairly disappointed with that film right and especially with that whole Sharon Tate part and um, yeah just for people who who probably uh, would want to know what exactly i'm talking about is like um, just sharon tate driving around and going to parties dancing and and brad pitt driving around brad pitt driving around and uh, and sharon tate uh, you know going and watching film where she stars like where she starring herself as well i mean uh, what i appreciated in in that was um, imagine that's a he's tarantino took a, a very real person he put it in his film mm-hmm. and he he gave gave her his interpretation of how that star would behave uh, in that moment like she's living that life you see her walking right yeah she's giving like a lift to people exactly. and like helping out exactly of, exactly like taking a picture with people that's like you know today people someone might like that might take a selfie exactly like exactly, kind of, exactly exactly and uh, and and that whole aspect of uh, of an actor also going and watching herself on screen just the whole idea yeah 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 i yeah. mean that just gives so much to the viewer like i don't know if, if people were able to absorb that absorb the fact that she's uh, that she's a real person as well because people are right. are bound to expect caricatures of of real life personalities right that's like the easiest yeah, yeah. way to spoon feed people and just the whole mm-hmm. idea of uh, her going to a theater and watching herself on on screen and you know laughing and just looking at people's reactions she just she just turns back a few moments where well she i think on screen she falls down or something she fumbles with suitcases and people are laughing and she just looks back at them just just turns back mm-hmm. slightly and smiles she knows people are enjoying that performance and as an actor you like as a viewer also you feel what that what that person is feeling at that moment so it just yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. just the actor that's doing that's that's just uh, a real life person as well so that mm-hmm. was something very real like a very tangible moment in my opinion no so in fact like um, but just talking about like driving the scenes where people are driving around and all mm-hmm. so that was that was like one of the best parts of the movie according actually, to actually yeah see like i just watch any scene if it's like just well made and it's just like fun to watch mm-hmm. and this like you know that brand pay driving scene is like driving like crazy through this traffic exactly yeah like he's just dodging in and out of traffic and then mm-hmm. just going Uh, at full speed like this and it's like the night time and uh, you can see uh, and there's this mm-hmm. particular sound of this like engine whirring yeah 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 this is so well made like, like the f- yeah true you saw it twice mm-hmm. after the first time the first thing i saw is this like brand pit driving okay like just went on youtube and searched it <laughs> and just to see that scene and then someone had actually made a compilation of like brand pit driving scenes in this movie okay i'm like oh shit like actually people are thinking like yeah, this yeah. like people like scenes like this mm-hmm. uh, but that became like one of the main qualms people had about it exactly, like why yeah. do we have to watch brad pitt driving or this yeah place? i mean that's so fun to watch i mean it was fun to watch for me like both of us went to watch it twice and both of the times yeah, in theaters yeah it's such a good soundtrack like everything is good about it yeah right 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 <laughs> I, i maybe they were expecting like you know what is happening like what will happen next this happen so like what is next <laughs> in the plot bro that that's because people are contaminated with just the whole idea of something should happen just the whole mm-hmm. idea of like why isn't something happening uh, i'm like you just yeah, you know there's a uh, okay, woody allen made some uh, tv show it's called crisis, crisis in six crisis in six yeah yeah okay. i know i know And you know how Woody Allen movie is, right? He's just, it's just like uh, it can meander, it can go anywhere. It's not like this plot thing of this happening. <laughs> yeah. And then, like halfway into this uh, shoot, I, I think all the producers they pulled the plug or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He right. eventually completed it, I guess. And then he himself went on record and said, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I don't know anything <laughs> about TV today. And mm. I think this is because of this, like, everyone wants like, what is happening? Like, what happened next? What will happen next? I'll go to. I have DB synopsis and read or just go to some comment section and see what's happening. Yeah, it's like why watch a movie? Just go and read the synopsis, no? <laughs> That's what this one said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But explain. What? The this one thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, so um uh, we were watching some podcast, right? What what podcast was that? This one Read Kenny's uh No, no, like some that. podcast. And um, Biswa, by the way, who has made a TV show? He wrote a full TV yeah, show. Yeah, he wrote uh, Lakhon Me Ek, which is actually a really good show. Like I really liked it. Yeah. And um, I, I saw it in some podcast that he doesn't really like watching uh, uh, 
films or movies, scene, movies or, or, or shows or something. He just reads the synopsis and he's done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't have an issue if people do it. It's just that people fail to appreciate as well, like what's great. That's no, no. So what he said is like he. Hmm. Five minutes into something, he's like, uh, "Why am I watching this? I can just go read the synopsis." <laughs> because like, because people have separated the... the whole experience aspect of it from from yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole uh, film television thing. Yeah, and I think they forgot like the funness in the watching. It's like uh, exactly. I told you, it's like why why listen to songs? Just read the lyrics. Then. <laughs> That's why, no? <laughs> right, right, right. Same experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean the yeah, bro, so. Like right now, yeah, I so, think there's also yeah. one more thing. Like people watch films just to analyze it. I'm like, how you? How is that even fruitful in any yeah, way? There's too much analysis. Yeah, just <laughs> fucking watch it and enjoy. It. Yeah, it's just like you. I, I am used to just like watching random scenes. Like I'll go to YouTube and then I, I might have the movie with me. Yeah, right. But still, I'll just go to YouTube and like you know movie clips and all. I I do that just a lot. Simply go watch it. I think recent the re- most recent thing that I did was I watched a, a scene from uh, Phantom Thread, just the whole opening mm-hmm. and um, opening like five ten minutes. But that's like the first ten minutes of Phantom Thread. Like like it was just just the whole like I just watched those ten minutes it was so calming. Just watching it. So and- that whole movie is calming. I saw <laughs> it in the theater. Yeah, dude. There's one uh, <coughs> scene where this is a uh, soundtrack. Like uh, actually, this is one track in that whole album. Like people don't really. I appreciate it's called endless superstition. Mhm. When does it come usually? Like, I don't remember the So uh, oh. like they, they've gone on a date or something and then they're coming back in that car you remember. Yeah yeah yeah. And then they're in that car and then they visit this guy's like some some sort of ancestral home or something. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Mhm. And then it the car, it's just played when the car is just going into the house right. and it's full night. Right. And then inside this guy is talking about his mother like this mother's photo is there. Yeah yeah yeah. And then he's talking about like some dress they uh, he made yeah. made or something yeah. like that. It's just one track it plays during that. It's like the perfect track for like uh, you know gothic romance that type of thing. Like it's so like yeah. it's so ambient. Yeah, right. I mean, that's I think the fi- the film actually is a sort of in a way has taken elements from gothic uh, films on, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, like I, I heard it in uh, Mark Kermode's review that it was also like sort of uh, an interpretation of Beauty and the Beast in a way, right? Mm. Like not exactly like an interpretation, but just like some elements of that whole thing. And imagine just yeah, like I. And just just putting like some screwball comedy in there, and just putting some like I bro, like I, you know I. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect film to end this yeah. episode. Let's I, analyze that I, film, bro. Shankar, Let's analyze all the songs. Shankar masterclass, Sh- visionary director Shankar. Yeah. <laughs> but but actually, did you like I? Huh? Like I, I just watched for fun. Like it was like yeah. It, it was a lot of things were cringe, but then I saw it in the theater. It was like just fun yeah. To watch I, I mean, I, I was like yeah. I think we were all having expectations at the time we watched it as well. Like most that, of the people, it's like the biggest expectation for any movie. Like we saw a trailer and we're like, what the? Like how does this even exactly? Match? Like, yeah, nothing, none of the scenes, like the color, the colors don't match. Like what is happening? It's like Vikram and three characters. Everyone thought it was gonna be like Onion again. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. And those like they were reuniting after like some ten years or something, right? Mm-hmm. And that was a big disappointment, but <coughs> I think that was a great effort in a way. But I don't think yeah, so Shankar I mean, is going to change his movies are like revenge very good efforts. At least. Yeah, I don't think so. What? Shankar is going to move away from that revenge wala aspect from his films. But it's good, no? It's like true, true. I mean, like he's doing too much like technical uh, experimenting. But then, <laughs> actually, you know, his smaller movies like in Onion, mm. I think he's inspired by like Evil Dead and all. You know, you know that like right, the, the hair falls the on the camera. camera. Yeah, right, right, right. And There's this one sequence where <clears throat> there's a fight scene and he's going through doors and it's shot very much like Evil Dead. Right. And then just the yeah. hair, bro. Like it's, it's such a small detail, but it's like he's thought of it that time. Exactly. Like that was like the, some 16 years now, right? 2004 or five. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like uh, there's one character whose hair comes forward, and so then that becomes the differentiating factor. <laughs> like eventually, it becomes like you see the hair, you know what is happening. Exactly. Like, exactly. I mean, that's a that's a, like super great direction. And then yeah, he followed it up. But coming back to th- coming back to this, like, uh, see how uh, Sharon Tate is depicted. Yeah. Because that's also a real person, right? It's not the person playing the person, but. Yeah. So, like, what is the difference? Like, how do you not make a or like how do you not make it overly caricaturish? Um, 
I mean, I really can't answer from an from an actor's perspective, but um, like from what I've read and seen in videos and uh, behind the scenes, like most actors tend to watch those actors in uh, like videos through video archives or photos or something, right? No, 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 not not from an acting point of view. I'm saying like, see, in this like this guy kidnaps a this guy's daughter and all. True. Yeah. Like, how do you approach putting someone who's real on screen? I mean, just the just the idea of him being himself. Like, you don't have to think you're being someone. Just become that person yourself. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but um, so basically, he's playing himself, so he doesn't have to put any exactly extra for him. To, it's a different thing, yeah. and also I think with Sharon Tate, uh, we've never seen her real life thing. To be very mm-hmm, honest, yeah. Like, I, I think probably eighty percent of of the audience that went and watched probably wouldn't have seen Sharon Tate apart from her films, right? Hmm. So that added some mystery layer that how however she performs is going to be mm-hmm. a very neutral pers- perspective, like mm-hmm. like you cannot judge her on the basis of like that. Like probably like if we've seen like Sanjay Dutt and then watching Sanju, you get some visual cues by Ranbir Kapoor, yeah, that bent shoulder and that little hunchback. Yeah, it thing. seems like he's doing it to look like that. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's also because we've seen a lot of Sanjay Dutt as an Indian audience, right? So I mean that's a different case, but with Anil Kapoor playing himself and with Anurag Kashyap, people have their own interpretation of who An- Anil Kapoor or who Anurag Kashyap is. I'm pretty sure they weren't like this. They just took an, just the essence and a hint of their normal lives and just mm-hmm. increased it by a notch. So that yeah, becomes yeah, yeah. a little more cartoonish, not caricaturish. Oh, actually, you know, like talking about Sharon Tate, Bruce Lee is ca- caricatured in that, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Like he does talk like that in some interviews and all, but it's still yeah, like if intentionally you, over the top. True, true. But I, I never really thought of it beyond just that character in the film. To be honest, mm-hmm. uh, I just enjoyed that whole part, like where even like Brad Pitt, uh, Brad Pitt's character mocks him, and that that was that was pretty much it. Like I just enjoyed that whole scene, and it ended. I didn't. It didn't go beyond that for me. Okay, like I am sitting back and uh, like thinking about his performance. Oh, you did. You were caricaturing in that. So mm. as a whole, if even it, even uh, Steve McQueen comes at this Playboy party. Right, right, right. For one scene or something, and then like I've never seen him being like that. Like I don't know his interviews and all. Right, right. I haven't seen his interviews, but uh, like in his movies, I've never seen him act like that. And I don't know. It's, mm. It seems like he just made that up. I mean that's that's the thing that I'm talking about. Like you really don't have to uh, play it out as that as that person is in real life. You just or or that person was in his films. You just um, mm. pick a certain tone for that. I think that is how you should really go about it. Like in real life, De Niro wouldn't really go with his eyebrows up and like eyes closed and like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's just yeah normal. That's I think uh, I, the best impression. Um, Of De Niro was done by Scorsese himself. I was like, that's because he knows him very personally. So mm-hmm. I think he did it on some talk show. I think it was Jimmy Kimmel or or Jimmy Fallon. I don't remember. But I, even mm-hmm. I thought looking at that, yeah, that's probably the best impression, De Niro impression, because he didn't old it. He just did it as he as he mm-hmm. seen him, right? Like he just took yeah, his real life. It's like one uh, some essence thing, and then mm-hmm. they that becomes the impression. Exactly, rather than, exactly. Like, rather than just one. Like, like, even like Shah Rukh Khan's impression is very overdone with, uh, uh, and all of that. It's not really like that, mm-hmm. right? You just overdone it in pop culture so much that it really, you know, uh, hammers into your head. Okay, okay, he actually is this way, but he's actually not this mm-hmm. way. Like it happens on SNL and all. Like there will be some guy who imitates someone who's in real life, maybe yeah. a politician yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that. And then the thing is, like they they make up some quote, and then then. they realize like they've never even said that in real life <laughs> and then they make the person in real life say that quote like whenever they go to places oh, was it mark wolberg thing that you're talking about i don't know this is one old thing this guy dana carvey okay he's like this uh, 90s early 90s snl okay. like a uh, big name then okay uh just preceding sandler and all okay 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 SNL. so this guy um, when George Bush's dad, what's his name? George H. W. Bush. Yeah, yeah, the senior. Secret yeah, so he made some impression of him. Okay. And then <clears throat> his whole, the only catchphrase he did was "Not gonna do." What do you mean you're not gonna do it? Not 
gonna do it. You are too gonna do Not it. Not gonna do you it. You are gonna yes, do yeah. it. This is the full impression. Yeah. When people are like, <clears throat> nobody's even seen this guy say that. Then how did this guy even make it? <laughs> I mean. And then he. Yeah. There's there's a lot of uh, uh, things like. you take some uh, uh, inflection or like someone saying something and then that becomes the whole impression i mean i think that may also be the reason like some people because they have a certain set of expectation oh this guy is going to do this but he actually doesn't go and do that and that really mm. disappoints people i mean why did you have expectations in the first place like what did you think about anil kapoor's acting i think it was really good i think Yeah, it was it was really good. Like it was it was it seemed very real. Like it that actually didn't seem uh, like even in these four scenarios, it didn't seem uh, caricatures or anything. Right, 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 right. And at no point did it become. I think uh, Anurag Kashyap fumbled at like one two points, but I think people might miss that those things. Yeah, I mean like nobody expects him exactly, to do exactly, exactly. But but at also. some points he was like so good, like. I, when he uh, did those reactions i was like oh my god that that, that is great i mean if uh, mm-hmm. i mean how do i explain that thing but uh, uh, that one scene uh, are we giving out spoilers mm, uh, we can give spoilers from now if you have no i said no if you haven't seen it come back okay so anyway like at some point um, anil kapoor gets hit by by a car and that's in the trailer mm-hmm. as well and uh, anra kashyap is left behind actually in that in that chase and he comes in huffing puffing uh, like 5 or like 10 minutes later or post uh, anil kapoor's monologue and just that whole sly smile on his face when he asks ke uh, when he when that when that uh, camera lady uh, tells him he got hit by a car and that that smirk that comes on his face did you get that shot <laughs> like <laughs> That was super. Like you're expecting some like let's go to hospital. Uh, yeah, I mean that was really good. I mean that reaction, and even in Just some the delivery was so good. Exactly, that that timing was. If, if that timing would have been bad, no, that whole effect would have been like useless. <laughs> yeah, even in other others. In fact, I don't know how how they would have gone about in the making. Like you know that they know how it is. Right, right, right. And then, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they did workshops and all. I think they rehearsed for a while for sure. Because I don't think so. Otherwise, they would have gotten that chemistry, uh, that whole open, open nature of uh, being yeah, buffoons yeah. in front of each other, in a way, in a way. But yeah, I think his acting was like supreme. I think something that I'll also like to talk about would be music. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it almost goes unnoticed because it's so good and it complements yeah, the narrative so it well. It complements the narrative so well that you probably like fail to notice uh, it was that good. Even even Sapnil Sona won his camera work. I mean, partly the film was shot by the girl herself, but mm-hmm. just 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 the guy Swapnil Swapnil Sonawane directing her was some great work. Like it was one of the best. So the girl in the movie shot the half the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But just and she's not a camera person. She's just an actor. Right, right, right. Just the whole uh, camera work also is like something really great to be honest. I mean, these are like uh, we can just say that okay, they're they're good. Like I mean, we, we can be. Uh, we can go specific as well, but but I think just being generalized in that way also like proves our point because it's actually really you have to really watch it to know what how good actually it is. Yeah. So would you recommend it? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Like it's recommended. I'm not sure how it'll last long in people's memories as probably mm-hmm. Trapped, Lotera, or uh, or the cult following Bhavesh Joshi got or or like Udan's whole thing. But AK was a AK is a very good watch. Like it's a very good watch. And like Lutera is like it's remembered for you know songs. Songs are right, right, right. And even like the leads acting in it. And Udan also has a separate fan base altogether. And I think similar to all of that, uh, Bhavesh Joshi also developed a different cult altogether. Like when I went to watch mm-hmm. that, there were like barely like twenty people in theater that day because most people had gone to watch uh, We Are the Wedding. <laughs> Bro, which film did you yeah, watch? Yeah, I actually? went to watch that. But yeah, I mean, that was the that that's that's a good film, Bhavesh Joshi. Tere dil. Oh. Yeah, but I'm not sure how long AK vs AK will last in people's memories. But um, it's a good film. But you know how many movies have come out recently where this is the same thing? Like it's some big filmmaker and they made some movie it sounds very forgettable. I think that's also like, also the if, choke, right, right. Uh, but like, 
I'm pretty sure this movie, Mank. I don't think anyone will remember. Exactly, that exactly, yet. exactly. I think uh, even with Gulabo Sitabo, which came on uh, Prime, I don't think so. People have as pe- have spoken about it later this oh, year or something. Oh, that is like forgotten. Like I was just thinking, like, what is this movie? Yeah, I mean, there have been bunch of. I think that's that's an issue with respect to uh, online streaming services. Uh, I cannot really complain about it because. When you, if you get if you want that kind of freedom to make it for an OTT platform, you also should be prepared that people are going to be uh, people are going to forget your film very soon. Like it doesn't have Even any longevity. Even like I'm thinking of ending things. I mean, I don't think there were so many people talking about that. Right, right, right. Like I mean, a bunch of movies. Uh, people didn't speak about those films later on after they've released. So I mean, Netflix does give you a lot of freedom. Uh, in as a whole but i don't think so even like irishman bro like is anyone talking about irishman now i think everyone is forgotten about it uh, people did forget about it but there's a certain small section like that full fan base of irishman that keeps talking about it and I, in my opinion like i've seen a lot of uh, like uh, amongst like the bunch of cinema people i know they've been, they've been talking about irishman i think that is in my opinion the only success i don't think so people talk about roma anymore Like yeah, but I like Roma. No, I'm not talking about really if it's good. a good or bad film. I think people haven't spoken about Roma since that awards yeah, campaign actually, actually. at all. Like compared to like Children of Heaven. Exactly, all. exactly. Children of Men. Children of Children Men. Of men. Yeah. men, yeah. But Heaven is. Uh, that's like the men. that's like an issue with respect to OTT services. But can't really do anything. Yeah. Um. So just just um. Uh, Let's just wrap it up, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, if you have any movies that we you want us to talk about, just uh, drop a comment. Yeah. Any other topics that you would like to discuss? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to, uh, uh, what else? Okay, I have to wrap it up now. Yeah, yeah. Are you just? Okay, so that's the podcast. <coughs> so yeah. please uh, drop a like, subscribe. Uh, we'll be coming with more episodes. For sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay. That's it, right? Anything else? Anything else you want to add, Sanjeev? Uh, This is the ending part. Just, just like, sh- subscribe, share, and uh, probably we are going to talk about more latest releases and some uh, obscure stuff, some some things that pe- we'd like to recommend as well to people, because uh, that is this is the purpose of the podcast. Like we'd like to promote uh, some films that people might have not seen, and uh, this is mm-hmm. a great way to uh, to check out those films, like to know more about those kind of films. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, let's aim for 10k likes guys yeah thank you sponsor it netflix bye has to let me stay